Welcome to Sustainable Sailing. It's Monday the 23rd of May and this week the job is to sort out the main 48 volt battery banks. Here we have our temporary steps because the old ones were fitted permanently to this and the bulkhead that I've taken out there. We are modifying the original ones so they will hook onto French cleats along here and be easily removable. Until then, we've got these temporary ones. Now, the battery, getting them out, temporary or not, is not the easiest thing. There we go. Got them out. Let's put them over there for a minute. We have four of these 300 amp hour batteries, which will be the top layer of the battery bank. And if I just take that access hatch out, this was uh, where the original water tank was. You can see the top of the keel down there, and that's where the fourth battery comes to. Underneath those four 300 amp hour batteries are four 120 amp hour batteries, which are small enough to drop down into that lower keel space. The challenge is that the batteries have got to be watertight. We've got to protect them from any uh, water damage. We don't want them shorting out and getting ruined. And of course, having them in the lowest part of the boat um, makes them vulnerable to that. Where the hull starts to come up there from the keel on each side is going to be a battery compartment sidewall. And the final lid over all the batteries will be a um, sheet of uh, everything's going to be 18 millimeter ply, and that will bolt down onto a rubber seal. That's kind of the starting point of getting them waterproof. That they will, the edges and ends will be sealed to the hull, and the top will go onto a rubber seal. Beyond keeping them dry we also have to make sure that there is no way that they can move and particularly no way that um, several hundred kilos of battery could fall on your head if the boat got turned upside down. Part of what I'm going to be doing is creating a shelf between the two sets of batteries that will itself hold down the lower batteries and then a shelf for the top ones and I want to make sure that there is no movement at all in the batteries. I think the American ABYC standard allows for an inch of movement, which just seems crazy. I want to make it so these batteries cannot move, but also make it so that if we ever change batteries, we haven't got to rebuild the whole compartment. So um, it'll be slightly larger than the batteries with braces across for these specific batteries. What I've decided to do is to cut the existing floor as my next job so that I can have the space where the battery box is going completely open without at the moment losing the floor everywhere else. There's a, a beam across here so I'll cut the main saloon board across there. I'll cut the board going into the galley where I can find a support or I'll have to add a support and cut the one that goes down to the corridor to the aft cabin. That's going to, to open all this up for access. At the aft end behind those batteries, there is an opening from the top of the keel. So water could flow down the, the bilge, the bottom on top of the keel, and into the deep part of the bilge behind uh, under the motor compartment. So I'm going to block that up. And what will happen is that this area to each side outside the battery box wall will become the new bilge so I will open that up through that bulkhead there and there I want to make it so it's a nice smooth um, bilge obviously all this is going to be uh, cleaned up sanded painted uh, epoxy coated wherever we want to be confident it's 100% waterproof and um, that will be an easy to dry out um, bilge and a route for any water through to the deep bilge. The battery wiring 
is all stacked there and the cable that we're using for all of the 48 volt is this enormous 95 millimeter squared cable which is uh, nearly two centimeters diameter that then will be coming from these batteries through a watertight gland in that bulkhead to uh, via a switch for each battery bank to a buzz bar there will also be a fuse on the positive the last positive uh, in each series of four batteries so it's four 12 volt batteries um, in parallel with another four 12 volt batteries and somewhere here ah oh yes this will be shortened but this is the um, tinned copper buzz bar material that I'll be making the two buzz bars so we will have just on the other side of that bulkhead you can see the mounting bolts here is the multi plus it always gets a little bit confusing because remember this companion way is not centered so that's the sort of center line of the boat about there anyway on the far side of this bulkhead there will be a positive buzz bar on one side of the multi plus and a positive buzz bar a negative buzz bar on the other side of the multi plus the batteries will connect to that via the fuse and the switch so that we can turn off either battery bank and we can be confident that um, the wiring is protected by that fuse the fuse will be inside the battery locker right next to the batteries and the uh, switch is going to be just on the side here i've got a sheet of 18 millimeter ply arriving tomorrow i'm not quite sure how much i will need for this but eventually all the floors are going to be redone with that 18 millimeter ply all of them uh, bolted down so that they can be easily uh, taken up and guarantee they won't fall off let's start opening up this floor and uh, looking at where we're going to build this battery box I'm not sure how much of that cutting out came out on video because uh, the GoPro Pro overheated and froze. But this side has cut out nice and cleanly. I've got a nice support there which will do well for the moment. These where it was tabbed on um, have come off pretty clean just straight cutting with a multi cutter and I will tidy them up with the multi cutter it makes so much less mess than putting a um, angle grinder on it a bit of floor here I'm going to add a brace there in a minute just so that that main saloon floor is supported on this side I've uh, gone back far enough to get a close fit I might cut this one back just a little bit further as it is bonded to the hull with that bit of plywood so I can cut right up to that um, temporary support for the galley so basically to that line there then it gets a little bit more tricky where we've got that settee coming out in the end what I think I'm going to do is keep that and glass that in a bit better on both sides and that will be the side of the battery box at that point so when it comes to installing the bilge drain it will have to go inside that locker and come out here so I'm just going to cut this bit down that line of that flange for the moment and that should give me enough space to work on these boxes and I've just got to work out how to 
build the structure basically what I'm thinking at the moment is to lay a stringer along there timber stringer fix it to the hull initially just with thickened epoxy shape it but with a plane so that it sits to the top of it and this edge is vertical and then the new side can be glued and screwed to it and that side will come up to well what's height will it come up to it depends how I'm going to do the floor I haven't fully decided that yet so um, I don't want the end grain showing um, so probably it needs to come up to 18 millimeters below the floor level it'll have side pieces and then the rubber strip on top of it once I've got those sides in then the end just fits between them that end and that end these batches by the way will have to be rotated 180 degrees because I think I want the positive in that corner negative positive so what we, we want to do is end up making it so that the total length of all the positive cable is the same as the total length of all the negative cable and we want to make sure that that is the same all four lengths are the same for both so both battery banks have all their positives and all their negatives added up all the same length so that the resistance is as similar as possible the resistance pack of the batteries is very very similar They're 20 micro ohms for the 300s and 25 for the 120s so our understanding is that if we make the cables as identical as we can and then pick the very slightly shorter one for the battery pack that has a slightly higher resistance it will be as close to uh, equal as possible and we are wiring up battery balances balances between them all as well this side again I'm looking at running a stringer outside the battery pack so it'll be in the bilge area and then the bilge will be um, filled around it to give that nice smooth run for water nowhere to catch dirt or anything that will run just to this bulkhead and then a new end across here okay it's not as big a job as it felt before I started I don't think to build this box obviously these lower boxes the batteries are so much smaller that I might put sub drop in subdivisions between them which will support the floor for the bigger batteries and make it easier to ensure that the small batteries can't move around because obviously there's a lot of space for that one to to slide from side to side or lengthways let's carry on cleaning up ready to do that uh, then get the floors back in where i'm not working and we can start thinking about these side supports okay that's all for now as i thought those bits of tabbed in bulkhead have come out really clean and easy i um, just need to back up but i was just uh, standing here on the keel remembering again how fortunate we are with the rival that these bits weren't structurally holding the hull together or anything like that we're adding stuff that's going to be doing that so we're adding extra strength but all of this is so strong there's no cracking there's no problems at all there's no rot there's nothing to worry about in terms of this structure it is incredibly uh, solid but also it's uh, very very deep so when i'm standing here on the keel i can only just reach out over the companionway to throw out the bits of old wood so that's how high how far short i am of being able to reach the deck right i'm gonna to have to cut the floorboard for here so i'm just going to fit that um but getting out is rather a challenge at the moment so as soon as i've got these two bits of floor fitted there 
and there I'm going to have to make a platform to stand the ladder on. Okay, I think perhaps a vacuum cleaner next. That's exciting. I won't bother filming that. Here's something I'd like to do differently. I mean, just cut this board and that one over there. What I don't like is that at the edges, they're chamfered to lay flat on the curve. And that sharp edge there is resting on like some vinyl sticky stuff that was supposed to look like timber. And it leaves a crack which is just brilliant for getting dirt stuck in it and then making it creak as it uh, moves on lumps of dirt. So around the edges I'd much rather end up with something a bit like this, a bit of a bit wider than that, something that's affixed to the hull, is flat for the floor and permanently epoxied in to provide then an edge that's the full depth of the floorboard so that the floorboard itself doesn't have to taper as it goes up to the side of the hull and everywhere our new floorboards rest on an edge that edge is going to have three millimeters of neoprene so we'll bolt through that neoprene and hopefully that way end up with a floor that doesn't squeak at all because I hate squeaky floors Okay, now let's make a platform for the ladder. This is the temporary floor I've ended up with to support the ladder. I'd love to know whether you think these longer and more frequent videos are useful as I discuss the plans and show progress in more detail of what we're doing. More on the battery box later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.